everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host, Jennifer Zheng. In the past several days, a piece of news has become very hot among the Chinese community, especially the overseas Chinese community. And the news, or rather, the unconfirmed allegation is Liu Yazhou, former PLA Air Force General and son-in-law of former Chinese Chairman Li Xianyan, was arrested. Because Liu Yazhou was a very high-profile, well-known, outspoken, and controversial general, the allegation about his arrest and the possible reasons behind it have caused a lot of discussion. After reading through a lot of his previous articles and statements, I think it is worthwhile to do a program to talk about this issue, not only because his thoughts are very interesting and unique among high-profile CCP figures, but also if he was really arrested because of his thoughts and ideas, the world needs to know what is in Xi Jinping's mind or what Xi Jinping's thoughts are. So today, let's talk about this hot topic. Several days ago, on December 19th, a Chinese writer living in New York first revealed that Liu Yazhou had been arrested in Beijing. Then another overseas Chinese media reported more details, saying that Liu and his wife and son were arrested together on December 15th. His wife and son got released on December 20th, but Liu was still under arrest. And then, An award-winning reporter Gao Yu tweeted about his arrest with several images of some social media posts. By the way, I once attended a Chinese pen conference held in Hong Kong and met Gao Yu there. We were both members of the Chinese pen. See this photo? She's in the middle and I'm on the right. So I can say I kind of know her, and I think she's a trustworthy reporter. Anyway, the post that Gao Yu tweeted says that Liu was arrested because of some corruption issues, and he's having improper sexual relationships with several young female military officials, as well as his political views, etc. Why did the news about his arrest cause so much attention? First of all, because his father-in-law was the third Chinese chairman, Li Xianyan. That is to say, Liu Yazhou's father-in-law was once the most powerful man in China. So this is a photo of Li Xianyan with Mao Zedong. And this is a photo of Li Xianyan with Deng Xiaoping. And this is a photo of Li Xianyan with U.S. President Reagan when he visited the U.S. And this is a photo of Liu Yazhou. The second reason why Liu Yazhou's arrest has caused so much attention is that he's very he's a very unique person. So people immediately rushed to speculate why he was arrested. Before I talk about people's speculation about the reasons for his arrest, let me give a brief introduction of Liu Yazhou first. Liu Yazhou was born in 1952 and is 69 years old now. He was an Air Force General and the political commissar of the PLA's National Defense, Defense University before he retired in 2017. He was also a member of the CCP's 18th Central Committee, as well as the 17th Central Discipline Inspection Commission. He's very well known, not only because he is the son-in-law of a former Chinese chairman, but also because of his own talent and personality. He is a very good writer, military thinker, and speaker. 
He has written he has written quite a lot of books and articles. It is said that he thinks highly of himself and he hates nobody at all, including Xi Jinping. He was openly said the moral standards of all the CCP Central Committee leaders are lower than normal people. When people ask him, is your father-in-law Li Xianyan included? He said coldly. I said, all Central Committee leaders. See this photo? It was captured from a video of him celebrating Christmas in 2018. He said to the camera, we are celebrating Christmas here at a small roadside slack bar. You know, at that time, the CCP had already banned Chinese people from celebrating Christmas as it is a Western festival, but he just didn't pay any heed to the ban. So this video was once widely circulated in China. Before that, he was very hot in the news in 2017 too, when he retired. It was reported that he didn't retire normally, but was removed ahead of time because of corruption and the controversy over inviting Chinese media, a Chinese American Hollywood movie star Bai Lin to play the role of a CC of a CCP's Red Army soldier in a TV series dedicated to the 80th anniversary of PLS Long March. So this is a photo of Liu Yazhou and Bai Lin playing a Red Army soldier. Someone put, has put Liu Yazhou and Bai Lin's photo together. Why was there a controversy over Bai Lin playing a role in the TV series? Let's look at two other photos of Bai Lin. So this is one of her photos and this one. It was said that Bai Lin was once a mistress of Liu Yazhou. She came to the U.S. after the Tiananmen massacre in 1989. People say after that, she appeared in many adult movies to make a living. Some say she once played a role in an anti-CCP film. Some say she once gave witness at the U.S. Congress about being sexually abused by CCP's military figures, etc. So because of this, people, many little pinks in China said that to have Bai Lin play the role of a Red Army soldier was an insult to the sacred Red Army and its long march. And because of the public outcry, Bai Lin had to publish an open letter saying that she loves the Red Army. She felt very upset and sorry for causing the controversy. She cried a lot because of this, etc. Anyway, it was said that because of this affair, Xi Jinping was very unhappy and removed Liu Yazhou ahead of time. But the reason used was corruption. It was reported that Liu Yazhou handed over 170 million yuan or about 27 million US dollars made from corruption in 2016. And he thought he would be okay as he had already turned, returned the money, but he was removed in 2017 nonetheless. Then, if he was really arrested several days ago, what could be the possible reasons? An easy, an easy guess is that it was because of the CCP's internal power struggle. Some even, even say he might have been involved in some coup attempt. Some others say it is because of his views about the US and Taiwan. So what has he said about the U.S. and Taiwan? In an article published in, 20, in 2005, he said that the U.S. was the root 
or the real cause of Taiwan independence. He said, the real battle between China and the United States will always re revolve around the Taiwan issue, and the winner will be determined by the result of the Taiwan issue. So his point was, China should balance well its relationship with the US. China shouldn't be hostile against the US. Just try to achieve some kind of balance with the US and avoid the perilous situation of a full-scale shutdown. Then there will be no room for Taiwan independence. He also said that if we want to avoid a full-scale shutdown with the US, we need to not only have a strong economy, but also a powerful army. As to Taiwan, he said the best solution to win is to win the hearts of the Taiwanese. And to win the hearts of the Taiwanese, the CCP must, one, do well in political reform, he said. In order to win without having to fight a war, one must first do well oneself. A country must have a certain spiritual, spiritual attraction to win the heart of others, but China didn't have that attraction yet. He also said that it is better to have Taiwan seeking its return to China itself instead of us seeking Taiwan's return. The real war happens before the war starts. Then he said to handle the Taiwan issue well, the number two thing the CCP must do is to handle Hong Kong well. If one country, two systems works well in Hong Kong, Taiwan be, will be one back. So he said we should try to integrate with Taiwan instead of conquering Taiwan. So you can say the above is his strategic thoughts about how to deal with the relationships with the US and Taiwan. Tactically, he also wrote many articles. So in 2004, he wrote a very long article entitled a review of the Battle of Jinmen. That battle happened on October 24th, 1949, only 24 days after the CCP established its regime. The CCP intended to take over Taiwan after taking Jinmen first, but lost that battle bitterly. As a result, Taiwan was saved. So Liu Yazhou discussed in detail why the PLA lost that battle in this very long article. In another article of, of his published in 2008, he talked about the failures of China's Taiwan policy. His arguments are, one, we don't have to push too hard to unify Taiwan. We can do as Deng Xiaoping once suggested, leave the Taiwan issue to future generations. Two, our Taiwan policy in the past several decades is a failure as we have lost the hearts of the Taiwanese because of our own endless class struggles. Three, too many officials are telling lies about Taiwan and giving us wrong information about Taiwan. He further said that Taiwan's importance does not lie with its economy, but lies with, it, with its military and strategic status. If we control Taiwan, it is like having a stranglehold on Japan's throat. That's the real importance of Taiwan. He said, resolving the Taiwan issue needs, a, needs big wisdom as well as real strength, but we don't have big wisdom. Our strength is not strong enough either. He gave out seven reasons regarding why China's strength is not strong and said the seventh is the most important one, which is the country doesn't have spirit or is spiritually bankrupt. He went on to say how advanced the U.S. technology and the military power are, and there was little chance that PLA could win. At the end of the article, he said, 
Deng Xiaoping once said, no matter it is a white cat or black cat, as long as it catches mice, it is a good cat. I want to change this sentence to, no matter if it is a white mouse or black mouse, as long as it can avoid being caught by the cat, it is a good mouse. What did he mean? He means as long as the CCP can avoid being wiped out by the U.S. Army, the CCP should be celebrated. There's another article called Some Code Knowledge You Need to Know Before Attacking Taiwan. Some say this article was by Liu Yazhou, some say it was not. Whether it is by Liu Yazhou or not, the main points of this article are the war against Taiwan will be much, much harder than the Battle of Jinmen, which the PLA lost. The article lists five unfavorable factors against the CCP. One, there are no suitable landing beaches at the site close to Taiwan Strait, so the PLA soldiers will be eliminated very quickly after they landed. Sorry. Two, Taiwan's military airports were in the western region and built in the mountains. So intensive missile bombing is simply useless and cannot destroy Taiwan's air force. Three, Taiwan has a universal military service system and has more than two million reservists and they are trained every year. When the war breaks out, these people can be recruited within 24 hours and go straight to fight without training. Four, the international situation is not favorable either. Apart from the US, Japan, South Korea, Australia, India, Vietnam, and Philippines could all get involved. China cannot fight the war, especially when the Malacca Strait is blocked. Five, the US has been preparing for decades for the war in the Taiwan Strait and already has a very mature plan to beat the PLA. So these are the five main points listed in that article. Make a lot of sense, right? No matter whether this article is by Liu Yazhou or not, I think its main message is consistent with his other articles about Taiwan. In 2019, Liu wrote another article and discussed China's history and what makes a good national leader. He said, once a certain ide ideology becomes the only legal one in the country, the nation can no longer have any imagination and spirituality. If a hundred million people's thoughts come from or are, are controlled by one person's thoughts, that is the greatest instability for a country. He also said that the collapse of the Soviet Union was the result of the destruction of people's thoughts, although on the surface it looked like that economy was the immediate cause. But the real reason was that the ruling party had been working tirelessly for decades to do one thing, that is, to disable the people's ability to think. Well, what do you think? I think people would inevitably assume that he was taking a jab at Xi Jinping. Last year, another very high profile second general, general red and a real estate tycoon, Ren Zhiqiang, was sentenced to 18 years after he openly criticized Xi Jinping for being a clone, just like that emperor who stripped naked, but insisted on standing there exhibiting his new clothes. So some people say that if Xi Jinping doesn't like Ren Zhiqiang, he will like Liu Yazhou even less. 
In some sense, Liu Yazhou can do more harm than Ren Zhiqiang, as Ren Zhiqiang just simply cursed Xi Jinping with some simple names and terms, but Liu Yazhou's very convincing thoughts and arguments may have more power and influence, and thus can do more harm than Ren Zhiqiang. So my own concern is, if Liu Yazhou was arrested for saying that it is better that we don't attack Taiwan, does that mean that Xi Jinping is really planning to attack Taiwan, so he needs to remove Liu Yazhou as an obstacle? But there are also some other China observers who say that they don't believe that Liu Yazhou was arrested nor do they believe that Xi Jinping is planning to attack Taiwan as he simply dares not. Well, what do you think? Leave us a comment and tell us. Well, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If it's your first time here, please remember to subscribe to my channel. If you are an old friend, please like my videos and share them with more people. Christmas is coming. And I wish every one of you and your families a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. See you next time.